Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Grant Cameron. Thank you for taking time from your valuable schedule to be with me today. And my guest today is uh, Reverend Judy Weaver, who is a, a gifted international spiritual trance channel, which was what interested me in contacting her. She's a master metaphys metaphysician, medium healer, shamanic practitioner, since the early 1990s, she strives to walk in a path that is open to growth while remaining in the gift of the present of each day. Uh, she's the founder of Heart for Souls, a nonprofit organization dedicated to spiritual development and healing modalities. She is a published author of Guided by the Light and Truth Beyond. Her educational travels are diversified. Delphi University of Spiritual Studies and Patricia Hayes School of Healing and Metaphysics, Inca School of Medicine in Cusco, Peru, and an international association, an international association of metaphysics. Uh, she was she has been designated grandmother of the Talking Stick Circle in the Southern uh, Casadega Spiritual Camp, Florida since 2013 and has practiced with healers and elders in Peru, Brazil, and North America. She travels with Spirit Fest Florida and New England. She offers services virtually as she travels throughout America, including Lilydale, which we'll be talking about today, New York, uh, Camp uh, Chesterfield, which I wanna also talk about, Indiana, and coordinates spiritual journeys for personal development. That's quite quite the long uh, list of accomplishments you have. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess apparently it was too long. It seemed like it went on and on and on. <laughs> yeah. Well, but Judy, I'm busy. I will say that I've been very very busy. <laughs> yeah, Judy. Thank you very much for for joining me and for uh, taking up my questions that uh, interest me because I've done a lot of uh, work. I started in the UFO thing, but I'm I'm more into uh, the field of consciousness, how reality works. And I'm more interested in people like you who may actually have some contact because we're we've spent a lot of time listening to the left brain, the ego, the the rational mind, and now it's time to talk to people who I think may be in contact with something where the information is a little more valuable and a little more accurate. I completely agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So let, let's get a little bit of your background. How you got into this? Were you always, uh, you know? doing no not always doing i mean you know i think i was always been a person of faith and um i can look back and i can say oh yeah it goes back to the very beginning but i didn't get it i think that's the biggest thing so i was probably you know knocking on 30 right around there and at that time i was uh, living up in connecticut and um, my father had been diagnosed with cancer had a very large tumor that had burst through his intestines and they'd be given three months to live now, as a young teen, I had lived in Florida, so Southern Baptist was my primary religion. And I went to bed, normal night, you know, and I sat straight up in bed and very clearly heard, you've got to go to Florida and do a healing on your father. And I looked around the room and I'm like, uh, who said that? And then I'm like, but wait a minute, God, dad's an atheist. Because this was such a huge push for me because my faith I'd been a person of faith, but it was Southern Baptist and people didn't do that. And my father was certainly not any kind of a faith affiliate. And, you know, like a lot of light workers, there's a lot of abuse that comes into play as we are learning how to grow and to become all we are. And so I'm not saying it was unique in my family as well. And so it was very, very difficult to pick up the phone and say, uh, hey, dad, God said, I got to come to Florida and do a healing on you. <laughs> And, you know, so I kept praying, are you sure you really want me to do this? You know, and, yeah. and, and I kept hearing it over and over and over and over. And so, you know, it's a very, very long story, but, you know, long and short of it is my dad was open to it. The whole family was, was. open to it. Wow. Yeah, we I went to Florida, you know, and we did this ceremony around him. I'm not saying he didn't continue with medical science because he did, but that ceremony changed our family. He became a man of faith and lived another nine years. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. It's not about us knowing the outcome. It's about us stepping into what we are being guided to. Yeah. And that is the spiritual story all the way around. And, you know, after that, I mean, I was like putting my hands over people and I would watch the buttons, you know, actually 
level out. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? What is, what's happening here? <laughs> you know? And then, and then God's telling me you're a crystal light healer. And I, by that time I'd gone to Florida and I'm like, you know, I go into Casadega. I'm like, can you tell me what a crystal light healer is? And they're like, well, everybody is. And I'm like, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned about what that was for me personally, when I went to Abagina, Brazil, and um, while I was there, I went in and I had some profound spiritual experiences and it was during Easter time. And um, I felt crystals be inserted into the palms of my hand. Wow. And then I felt tubing go straight through the top of my head and out my arms. And I very clearly heard I've had to insert you with this new crystal hardware. So your physical body can handle the level of healing energy. It said not now, but in six months. And I'd been doing my healing work by then, you know, for 20 years, but, you know, just still doing healing, working at the church. I was a co-pastor of the church and have taken over the church. The, the you know, just church? Uh, no, no, no. Spiritualist <laughs> church by then. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I didn't do the boundaries. <laughs> Not to say I am, I am an expansion of is the way I work that. <laughs> okay. 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 Now I understand. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, but then it was like, that's when the trans channeling started for me. And it's not that I was planning to trans channel. Um, I, there was really not even any training because I started trans channeling back in 2013. And um, it just happened is, is what happened. I, I went to go to the talking stick circle. I'd just taken it over and I would go ahead and channel, write my prayers. And I would get there to like, I was going to sound all good and, you know, be in charge and all that. And, and I showed up and I went to go and read my prayer and I couldn't read English. Oh. And that's when chief white Eagle stepped in. And so then I just had to let go. And so what happens is I step aside and I allow for God's source, archangels, whomever highest and best to come in. And then as my journey continued, um, 2017, I felt called to go to Mount Shasta. And you know the way that goes, when the land calls you and you show up, things happen to you because we've yeah. left things in place. Okay, one, one question, then we'll go to Mount Shasta. The, the uh, White Eagle, who was, uh, I'm not familiar who that was. Like, who, Oh, Chief White Eagle? Yeah. He is, um, he would be considered a master um he works with and that was a funny thing too i thought he was just my guide and i didn't think that anybody else had him and i was so surprised to find all these books written about him and i'm like well how do they know about him <laughs> <laughs> so are you in an aboriginal group uh is there aboriginal people at the at this uh talking six circle talking yeah, six. yeah 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 yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. In, in all types of indigenous um my line comes from the inuit line and i didn't even realize i had native american ancestries till like the trees were talking to me and the people were talking to me and, <laughs> and that, you know, all the world awakens when you awaken, everything continues to evolve and you are introduced to so much more than what you could ever possibly imagine is. Wow. So 2017, you go to Mount Shasta. That's when I got dragged into Mount Shasta. So tell me, tell me that story. Uh, First of all, which months was it that you were there? Um, I actually went in May 30th. Okay. So I, I, was, went, I was there in August. Okay. Yeah. So I went there and I come from Florida, right? And I knew I needed to go there and I didn't even know what for, but anyway, I just knew I needed to go there. And so I scheduled some nights in the area and, you know, I knew I was going to go there and just do some trance channeling and wander around and see what was going to come to be. Um, the part that I didn't realize, and again, I'm a Floridian. I, I, I get that. I show up there at Mount Shasta. Now, mind you, there's snow all over creation. The highest I can get is Bunny Flats because there's 25 feet of snow yeah. <laughs> up at Panther Meadows where I'm like, I have to go to Panther Meadows. And it's like, no, no cars are going to go there. <laughs> did, did you get instruction to go to Panther Meadows? I knew I was supposed to go there. They, I had heard that. Oh, okay. I, had, okay. I had felt that. Um, but that was not an option and it, and it really wasn't even necessary, um, because I, I would go to particular places. Like, I'm like, okay, well, you got to go to medicine Lake. Okay, fine. I'll go there. You know, what am I going to do there? 
And, and I actually couldn't even get all the way out to Medicine Lake because the road was still covered in snow. And I've got this rental car and I'm driving in the ice and I got no business out there so far away. I went to Pluto's cave, spent some time there, feeling, sensing, seeing. Oh. I went to uh, Crystal Lake, I found several different, you know, vortex places that I could feel the resonance and the energy. And, and then I had gone to High Falls. And um, when I was walking around the waterfalls, um, that was when the trees really started talking to me and calling me over. And I needed to like look and see what I could see. And I actually ended up finding, um, and I knew it was, it was an entryway that could go into Telos. And so when I went to bed that night and I'm trancing, they're like, well, you found the entrance. So we're going to let you in. Wow. And it's like, yeah, right. Then you go try to find it, go to sleep. <laughs> So, so let me ask you about the entranceway because we had uh, the same sort of thing as you know I, uh, I explained to you I had dealt with the Mission Rama people and I'd written two books on it and they had a doorway which they got somebody got a vision and we they actually found the doorway I found that kind of fascinating because it looked like a door in the side of the mountain and so what was your experience of, of the of the doorway and were you actually at it um, I was not I was actually at this rock and I think that you can actually even see the face in it. Wow. And I knew that I could it I could put my hand through it. And actually, these are different symbols that I got over um, some doors. I, I anyway, long story. We'll get into that. Yeah. Um, in a, in a little bit, but yeah. So when I went there, I knew that that was the entry point that I could go in there, even though it was like I don't know, probably fifteen miles from Mount Shasta. It wasn't near Mount Shasta. But I knew that the tunnels connected to be able to get to the city of Telos. And so, um, and they told me when you go to go to sleep, you know, you may not remember in the morning. So in the morning when I woke up, the only, I knew I had to fly out that day. And the only thing I could remember seeing was like the door that was like this. Okay. You know, the square across the top and, you know, the angled, like the Egyptian type of a door. Yeah. And, um, and then I get to the airport and it was like, delay, 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 delay. And then they said, start writing, start writing. And I wrote out nine pages of my experience of being in Telos. And this elder Lemurian, his name is Jamar. And he met me and he brought two other Lemurians. One was a woman and one was a man. And the woman, she went and showed me all around Telos and told me all about how the community ran. So how their children were being educated, the schools, the, the gardens, how much food they really needed to have, the different type of housing structures that they had. The gentleman, now at this time I was doing government work, okay? So um, I was always interested in infrastructure. So the gentleman showed me about all the infrastructure of Telos, how it was lit, the different ways of transportation, the, you know, water, what they needed for their facilities and things like that. And everywhere we went, everybody bowed to Jamar. I knew he was like really important, but I didn't know how important. And um, can you describe Jamar? Is he like, um, like, I don't know if I'm going to introduce you to Jamar. Well, yeah, I've, I, you <laughs> I'll, talked to him. But... Trans him. I know I'm going to trans him for you guys, but yes, 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 I will. So anyway, he's, you know, and the thing is, yes, I have read your books as well. Um, and, and it was, after I went out there is when I happened upon your books and it was like, huh, well, look at that. I didn't find a door, but you know, it's, it's yeah. a different kind of a thing. Um, but yes, yeah, so he, very luminescent. Um, and the people would wear pretty much like white robes is, is really what they were long blonder hair, mostly um, the women, it was almost Grecian style with the braiding and the gold banding that was around it. Um, I ended up at a later point in time when I wrote the book Truth Beyond, which goes into a lot more detail about visiting the community and working with them in their school system. Um, I had a chance to really meet a whole lot of Lemurians and um, they were working with me specifically to help write the book and to share the wisdom 
with everyone was, was what it really is. So, um, but when I met Jamar, he brought me down to this very large green crystal, which was a green selenite crystal and changed out my chakra center crystals very specifically. And after he did that, then my trance channeling changed quite significantly. Prior to, I pretty much had done my native spirit guide, you know, chief white eagle, angels, God source. But after that, now I can, I, there really isn't a limit to who I can trans channel. So, um, you know, I, I trans channel the, the dragons, the fairies, um, all kinds of, you know, Mother Mary, Jesus, um, pretty much anybody can come in, all kinds of different masters, you know, um, and earth energies, deep earth energies, you know, and that's important for people to know too, that there's very specific energetic forces that are balancing and managing the magnetic frequencies and lines of earth. And um, they are holding that energy specifically as part of their job as well. So, um, and that is important with the shamanism because you've got to be able to work concurrently with all of it. And what I have found is the more that I get deeper into the shamanism, the higher I go spiritually. So, um, and I trans channel the different star beings, you know, the Arcturians, the Palladians, all kinds of different ones will come through at different times. Um, the Thank people you. that I'm working with, my clients, my day-to-day -day interaction, um, have those relationships and they need to have those remindings. They need to have that, that connection once again, so that they will be able to remember what they're supposed to be doing and how to work with them more closely and how to understand what they're being guided to do. Okay, we'll take one step back. And can you explain for maybe the six people who don't know what Lemurians are and what the city of Talos, the, the story behind what that's all about and the connection to Mount Shasta? Yes, yeah, so Mount Shasta is a mountain that's in uh, Northern California. And um, it has long been spoken of that there are a lot of star beings that go in and out of that particular um, mountain. Now, Lemurians are, you know, most people know about Atlanteans, right? So the Atlanteans are another race of people. Lemurians are another race of people. And they have not really been known I, they're certainly not as popular as um, the Atlanteans. And the thing is, it's just that you don't know what you don't know until it becomes available for you to be introduced to learning about. And when I went out there, I heard little vagueness about Telos and Lemurians, but I had no concept of what that really meant until I had those personal interactions and information. So they are a, a very elder um, community that has been around for, you know, tens of thousands of years. And their mission is truly to help enhance mankind to provide us with a greater level of wisdom, um, a greater insight into our own personal development. Uh, Telos in the city, of, which is a city that is named inside of Mount Chasta, is just one of their communities. They have many different communities around the world. Um, they tell me that there's one, Russia and the Baltic Sea, and there's, there's different places that they have different communities. They truly operate in a different dimension. We're pretty much third through fifth. They tell me that they really resonate more around the sixth, seventh, and eighth dimension. Um, they have the ability to go ahead and to show themselves more so in a physical format when they desire to. They really don't have to eat the same that we do. They're beautiful, energetic beings. Um, they go through a long process of deciding when to have children and who has the opportunity to have children. It's not just absolutely anybody. Um, it's a very different educational system. They, uh, the trainings that I was doing with my book writing, I was able to work with their whole collective true elders. But where we met was in a conference space in their university and all of the college 
age students were up behind monitoring and watching so they would understand how government truly should be operating as a whole, as a collective for the best of everyone, not being in a hidden format, but being in an available of interest and of highest best for everyone. Now, what would you say in the UFO community you hear messages about nuclear weapons and our treatment of the environment? What would be the messages that you were getting from them that they want you to put out to the world? Well, you, everyone knows that around the nuclear sites, there's a lot more UFO visitations. Mm -hmm. And um, and I can guarantee on many occasions, we have no idea how and why, but other energies are stopping and interfering and or freezing to ensure that they have the ultimate control of these facilities. This is not, we think we have control of, but we really don't have that level of control. We cannot blow up this earth because we are blowing up many, many, many different cultures and species that operate on many different dimensions that is just out of our human purview of understanding of seeing, feeling, and, and being in that relationship with. So they have a very high vested interest to ensure that our, our planet exists. Now, they are constantly encouraging humans to take a more responsible role of looking at the type of damage that's being done to the planet, whether it's air pollution, whether it's water pollution, um, even the food pollutions of what we are doing and how we are um, truly killing ourselves with types of food and the changes that they are making to the food. And um, so there, there's, a, there's always a constant influence of education and impressing the importance of being more responsible in that and also encouraging humans to step into that responsible role of being able to work within their own energy fields and channeling that healing energy back into those resources because we have that capability as well. Wow. And, and would, this has led you to do, what, what would be your daily practice? Who are you working with? Are you doing healing, channeling? What's your, your things that you offer people? So I offer a variety of services. I offer a lot of educational teaching. You know, I, I have Heart for Souls, which is a nonprofit and it's a spiritual education. And so it is about teaching people how to do healings, how to work with their gifts. Um, one of the classes I'm doing right now is Awakening Lightworkers, and that's a seven week series. And the next one's going to be channeling your gifts. So it's really learning on how to work with are the people who are awakening and then how to work specifically with individuals who are awakened who really need to be bumped to that next level. I do a lot of light worker activations. I work with a lot of light workers, bringing them to the next level, giving them access to that starseed information. That's a big deal. And that happens with that light language and that, that, that connection of energy that I'm able to help provide them with. Um, I also obviously do a lot of soul work. Okay. So the, the shamanism, I will do soul retrievals. I do a lot of ceremony type of work. Um, I, you know, I, I do whatever I can along the way. I keep myself ridiculously busy. I do a lot of spirit festivals, but I will tell you this. I start every single day every single day without exception with no less than 60 to 90 minutes of meditation time and that means that i start my day at 4 30 5 o'clock in the morning because they like that quiet dusk time that that pre-dawn time because that's where the veil is the thinnest and that's where i always do my brainstorming what do you want me to do today? What will my next series be? How am I supposed to be, you know, getting the word out with this? One of the new classes I'm doing that's uh, tomorrow is uh, spirituality as your business. 
right? All these people are waking up and they're trying to go out there and figure out how to start their business. Well, they have no clue. And I did a lot of government work and I did a lot of nonprofit and I did a lot of uh, other different positions in my life, which gave me business development tools. And so to be able to help people do it so that they're not going to get in trouble with it, you know, nobody wants to get in trouble, (laughs) but we want to be able to provide the service. So how do we do that? And how do we do self care with that? That's another thing that's so important. Because when you're out there doing the work, you cannot be taking this energy from yourself. You have to be working with that higher essence of energy that comes through you and is working with the other people. And once it goes out of you and into that other person, frankly, it's none of your business what they do with it. You have to let go of it. It's up to each person to walk their own path as they're being guided to in their own timing and as they so are being, as they so desire with their own free will. So do you believe, you believe, I assume you believe that we come to the earth with a purpose, that we are, we're here to learn things. And so the question that is always raised in the UFO community is this idea about the bad guys. You know, there's the bad guys. And I mean, are they on a path or how, how do you deal with people bringing up this negative aspect of of beings that aren't like physical that are here to even like you would have uh, my friend Chris Bledsoe out of North Carolina was a deacon in the Pentecostal church. And when he had his experience, he spent spent nine months sitting there waiting, praying for God to take him away because it was just his life to, and his family's life just came apart when people found out said he was dealing with the devil, get out of the church. And so how do you deal with that kind of sort of negative interpretation of life? And how do you interpret life? Like, what's what's it all about if, if you were to spell it out for somebody? I believe that life is this beautiful melding pot of wisdom. It's an opportunity to learn as much as you can while you're here. And the way that we learn is through our emotions and our experiences. And each of those emotions create some type of a memory within that experience that allows us to have the lesson. We don't have to hold on to all of the emotional baggage that gave us that great wisdom. We can let go of it and allow ourselves to just hold that wisdom and continue along the journey, which is what we really have to do if we are really moving in that evolving process. Now, there are all kinds of energies, the yin and the yang, the shadow side of self. Don't think that you're going to get through this life and get anywhere and all be in fluffy puppy dogs and roses because the, the, the different challenges and the tests that you have allow you to be able to grow the most that you can. And it also allows you to truly evolve and to thrive through so that you then have that wisdom to share with others as well. You are always going to be looking deep within. And this is what's happening with all this elevation in this consciousness right now is people are just going bananas. And it's because they have to look at all of the deep seated incidents in their life, their choices, their decisions, their their traumas, their dramas, and they have to come to some type of a resolution with it because they cannot pick that up and elevate with this lighter energy that is elevating all of us up. You have to work through it. Now, when we're looking at across the world, 100%. There is all kinds of different vibrations of energy with different intentions and purposes. And when people are truly trying to step into the power of having the power of all of this, it's personal gain. And they're drawing their energy source from, not from that highest essence of, but from different energies. And these are the energies that they are manifesting, that they are creating, that they are sometimes working within 
dark spells, potions, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, working with different malevolent beings. There is energy that is available. Energy doesn't have a barometer of right or wrong. It is just there. It is up to us to have our free will and our choice to step into the responsibility aspect of what are we going to be doing with this? How are we going to be the change agents that are going to create the future for our future generations to be able to hold that and to lift everyone and even sustain ourselves for a longer period of time? Because I don't know about you. But they've told me for many, many years, I'm going to live to be 120. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. And Alberto Volato has said the same thing. He's like, oh, I'm going to be 120. I'm like, well, gee, look, I got the same memo. (laughs) (laughs) So you got another 80 years to go then. (laughs) Well, not quite that long, but... uh, (laughs) I've reached my halfway point. I'll put it that way, but just barely the halfway point. I got a long way to go. <laughs> when you do training, I mean, is, is whether it's healing or channeling, is there, um, is it like playing piano that there are some people who are sort of good at it and some can play and, and some are, are, are experts at it? Because as you know, I, I do this trans channeling experiment where I'm trying to find a trans channeler that it that that gets completely out of the way because you can get whether you're relay channeling or whether you're trans channeling and so is there is there a, a is this a learnable skill of whether it's healing or whether it's channeling it is a learnable skill by everybody you think about it whoever is an olympian champion right olympian yeah. champion some people are more naturally athletic attuned um and so some people are more highly sensitive but everyone can learn the specific tools but it's about how much you're going to exercise that that muscle to be able to work it and how to be able to work within and to understand the more that you're spending time on it, the more you're going to learn about it and the better you're going to get at it. Um, There are many people who are highly, highly sensitive and they just become so overwhelmed. And what ends up happening on a very regular basis is a lot of addictions. It's drug and alcohol, and they will go ahead and bury themselves under all these drugs and alcohol because they can't handle the world and, and the noise level of everybody else's stuff that is impeding on their empathic souls. So it's about learning to work with who you are, what you are. And let me tell you, in the last year, I literally have probably had a dozen clients who have been hospitalized psychiatrically within the last three years for mental breakdowns, which are really and truly spiritual awakenings. Wow. Because medical science doesn't know what to do with these people. All of a sudden, they're seeing things. They're hearing things. What is a schizophrenic really and truly? You know, what is this mental illness? What else might this be that is different than what we really knew was as an expansiveness of what really could be? Um, A couple of things. Uh, Seth, the Jane Roberts stuff, stated a number of times. Uh, you manifest everything around you. There is no other rule. Would 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 your information you're getting back that up? I think that we absolutely manifest all kinds of things around us. Do we control absolutely everything? I don't believe that. I don't um, because there we're living with all of these other people that are manifesting as well. And so there's a residual effect of where they are in the world. Um, I mean, I, I live beachside, right? And so when they're shooting off rockets that are going up into outer space, I see them that has nothing to do with me. Is the debris and the garbage coming back down? Do I hear the rumble? There are things that impact my world, um, but it is absolutely so important for each one of us to really be mindful of what do we want in our life? 
because if you are saying the world is falling apart and I'm going to die and woe is me. And, you know, they're always, I am, I'm always the one who's going to be hit and, and knocked over. That's what you're going to attract into your life over and over again, because that's the vibration that you're putting out. What vibration you put out is what you're going to attract back in. And I'm not saying you still won't have tests and challenges, but they are to grow you into a better you. Okay. Um, describe trance channeling to me in terms of how you understand it and what we the mechanism. Are they are you getting out of the way? Is you know your sort of little ego mind getting out of the way, and they are they are coming through and it, are they out there or is this all one thing? Is it all, you know, you hear now this, this idea that there may not be time and space. This is a, a you know, something of the human mind that's created. And so wh where are these beings and how does the trans channeling ex uh, just ex How does it uh, work for me? <laughs> What's that? How does it work for me? I, mean, I think that's what it really you're comes under, down Your understanding to of, of how, how it's working. Yeah, the, yeah. So and, I, and I think that, you know, and, and this is the thing. It really works with how the mind operates of the individual that they are working with. Because that's the same with, you know, if you pass away and it's like people say, oh, I went to heaven or if you're Native American, oh, I went to the great spirit beyond, you know, it's whatever you understand because they're trying to work with us in that capacity, whatever it is. So for me personally, I have a gatekeeper and I believe that every single person has a gatekeeper and they are like your spirit guide and or your guardian angel and they will stay in a dormant position until they need to move into an action oriented space. And my gatekeeper, his name is Baylot, and his job is to ensure that the energies that are coming through my body are of the highest resonancy for me. So it's a protector. He's a protector of my vessel. Um, when I first started trans channeling, I was like all over the place. And I said, okay, go ahead. I'm here. Go ahead. You can trans channel. And and I had them coming from all different directions. And at a later point in time, when I met with somebody and learned all about my gatekeeper and what they were doing, I realized that poor Baylot was kind of like the guy with the tennis rackets flipping all these things all over. So I actually created an organized fashion for him. So the way it works is I go up into my sacred sanctuary space and then there's a lovely little arch bridge over the water and there's a gazebo on the other side and anybody who wants to come in hangs out in the gazebo and so he's on this side of the bridge so I go up there and I hang out with him and then they just filtrate down into my body and they provide the information you can um sometimes it's depending upon what the question is as to who comes in and or sometimes people will ask specifically to hear from someone and then they will come in. So it, it can go twofold. I choose not to trans channel um, people who have passed because they are still in their own vibration and their own growth process is the way that works. Um, I have very little recollection about what is spoken during the session unless that energy wants to allow me to have a remembrance of what it is, I will have more of a recognition of my physical body. So if somebody was having a really hard time coming in, like some of the super high energies from um, our galactic friends, sometimes they will come in in just a light beam because they can't handle any kind of a physical essence. I'm just way too low of a vibration for them to be able to fit in. And or sometimes if it's an earth energy, a deep earth energy, then um, I might have more of a gravelly or sometimes my body will get in a very rigid position. And if I'm in a rigid position, I will have a memory of um, an uncomfortability of what was in my body. I really work diligently to have people not touch me during my sessions because it's um, physically highly startling for me because I'm out of it. And so then if somebody touches me, then the automatic fear, you know, fight flight, part of the instinctual aspect of the humanness immediately pops me back in and it can be very, um, 
it, it can be shocking to my system and it's difficult for me to be able to integrate back when it's not done in the pattern that I've uh, trained it to be doing. Interesting. Do you do a uh, group? Do you lecture around? different yes. places like do yes i love to lecture places i love to get invited invite me grant I'll there you go. Up. <laughs> i know somebody might be i know somebody might be interested in, in you yes, yes. i would love to i would love to yeah, the yeah, metaphysical yeah. tribe would love you <laughs> yeah, especially I, if you're, I would love to especially if you're doing uh you know channeling type sessions or and you're you've got a sort of a spectrum which i i think maybe we can point out to people that it's not just uh, you know, trans channeling or uh, uh, being cognitive or precognitive or whatever. It's all these things are basically the these things that you can tap into. It's all sort of the same thing. There's all this paranormal stuff, and it's all the same thing. People want to sort of put it down one little thing, and this is. Do we like this? Do we like this? This is actually a stone. <laughs> okay. And it, that is not of the planet Earth. <laughs> there, you, there you go. <laughs> wow. As a friend that had to come home with me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you get do you do you get other sort of things like you you mentioned this? Do you do you get things like a porch? Do you get dead people coming to you? Do you get uh uh premonitions and stuff like that where you have to sort of control it and and, and move it away? Because I've I've talked to some people, one particular girl. Who actually sort of overwhelmed her she had said shut it down i can't take this anymore and they actually shut it down for her for a period of time and that happens sometimes it can be to too much remember the bus is going to go forward but you've got your foot on the gas pedal how fast you want to go or how slow you want to go um my book truth beyond it it yeah. predicted the pandemic um, it was published just before it, and wow. it was very in September, and it very specifically said the world is getting ready to shift and to fall apart. It will never be the same of what it is. And so, yes, I will get some uh, premonition type of information, not necessarily specific details. Well, sometimes it will be date driven, um, you know, but sometimes it's personal date driven, you know, like I knew that the 29th. Um, you know, we just had this leap year day that that was going to be a profound date for me. And it was, I had a huge upload or download or whichever load we want to call it, depending <laughs> on how you want to go. It, it, it was loaded day. It was a loaded night. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I had access to a whole lot of different information that I didn't before. And so, yeah, it's um, it's it's always different in evolving in in its pattern of what it is. But the more that you work with them and that's I think is the biggest key I want to say. They are your partners. You know, you are working with your guides. You are working with your angels. You're working with the masters. You're working with the teachers. You're working with fulfilling your soul goal purpose and so they're going to bring your soul tribe together they're going to help bring them into an awareness into your you know connectedness so that together you can move whatever that is into that essence of fruition that's for the betterment of many not just self because we are not here just for self we are part of self but let me tell you most definitely and especially through this last couple of years we are all these brilliant little light beams that are connected part of that massive light grid that's working with that that conscious level of elevation that is very specifically working with Metatron energy and, and all those grid lines that are working with all that celestial information. Wow. That fascinating stuff. I mean, fascinating stuff in terms of uh, the, the ability to tap in. And that's why I say to people that, that you, you, you should listen to these people. If somebody's listening and they, they want to tap into their life purpose can you go through maybe some of the processes? Because uh, I'll run up against people that have had, you know, pretty profound experiences in in something, and I always say to them, I go, "You think you're on a mission?" And they go, "Yeah." They'll either say, "Yeah, I'm on a mission," and they'll tell you what it is, or they'll say, "I think so, but I don't know what it is." So, how would you guide someone who's looking, realizes they're probably here for some sort of reason, but they just can't tap into it? What would you suggest to them? Well, the first thing is everybody needs to know that it does not come with an instruction book and it's not page one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Huh. We as humans want to read the book and we want it to happen exactly in the way it's going to do. And that's not the way it works with spirit. The biggest thing you need to understand is that you've got to build your connection. You need to be able to get to know who your guides are, who your angels are, how they are trying to communicate with you and you dedicating time to listening and then acting on what you are hearing because it's about building the trust. It's building the relationship. The more that you hear, the more that you go ahead and act on, the more you're going to get and the more you're going to understand. But again, you may get puzzle piece 22, you may get puzzle piece 844. You have to be able to gather the information to assimilate it in some form of a fashion of you being able to understand it. And then it's going to click because there will be an inspiration that will happen. There will be an event that will unfold. There will be something that will personally happen with you. And it's like, oh, now I know what all of that is, you know, and, but it's aha moments. And when, and then you'll have 250 pieces of puzzle all jumped together into one. And then you've got this magnificent, you know, essence of where you are and how you're moving forward with it. Yeah. So it's about building the personal relationship and you have to dedicate time and attention. Don't think it's just going to happen by itself you're the one who's making it happen yeah and that that's that, that, i guess that way you would maybe agree that it would be part of that's part of the excitement of life is that they, they don't give you all the answers it's like i said i would say like the super bowl is eleven thousand dollars for a ticket to the super bowl how many people would go to the super bowl if they knew what the answer or what the final score was nobody'd go nobody'd pay 11. it's part of the thing is not knowing and putting it together and the excitement of getting pieces you talked about downloads um, um can you describe are you are you writing another book on 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 the material you're getting oh my gosh i've got three books going so i'm in the final editing of multi-dimensional mediumship this is a really great book because this is how to develop all of your mediumship skills and the way that the reason why it's multi-dimensional is because i do all of my training and trance. I, I do at least half of the training in trance so that all of my guides and, and again, Jamar is a huge uh, guide for me educationally. He has come in specifically to take on the primary role as an educator and trainer in my classes. Um, it was very interesting. I just finished the shamanism, which that's the other book that's going on, another book that's really happening. And uh, Chief White Eagle decided to go ahead and to really do all of that trans channeling guidance. And so that was highly unique because I've been trans channeling him since 2013. And he shows up on a monthly basis and does a big grandstand and just kind of gives the information for a quick clip, but never tapping into that level of the detail of the education and the training and how to focus yourself. And that book is um, really profound because I've worked a lot with um, another energy, which is um, Grandmother Owl Woman. And so she will take me on these psychic flights to different places where I will meet with many different indigenous elders and really have those experiences. And this is so cool. So one of the things that they were telling me about is how to be able to interpret your dreams and your visions, right? We all want to know that. And so then they're going into the detail. Well, what time of the day is it? Is there water? Can you see in the bottom of the water? What color water is that? What direction is the water flowing? And all of these different things that you are seeing or recognizing or feeling is essential in being able to interpret aspects of what else spirit is telling you within that experience so i know there's so many different things <laughs> <laughs> and, and when when is your when is this edited book you expect it out like how, 
Um, well, my goal is I've already had it through the editor once. So now it's back to me. My goal is by the end of May to have it done in my part of it. And then actually I'm looking for a fabulous publisher to publish me. So there you go. If somebody is really going to go ahead and make this happen, maybe they will, you know, step in. I am looking for somebody who's really going to allow this to take off. My other two books are great books. Um, I don't feel like the world has captured them in the capacity that they are ready to. So I do believe that this next book will be, um, yeah, it was really cool because while I was doing my Starseed Ancestry class, and that was all, you know, trans-channeled star beings, um, they got this fabulous photo of me with this big light ball coming out of the middle of my chest. <laughs> Wow. And, and so that's the picture on the cover. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, this stuff. <laughs> yeah, I do orbs. I have a, a lot, of, lot of research on orbs. So what do you, what do you interpret orbs to be? Um, those are, which by the way, I did pop on your thing and I saw the one of John Two Hawks. I love John Two Hawks. Yeah. Um, he's come down, he's worked with me a couple of different times. Really, really nice man. So yeah, orbs are different. Um, well, a lot of them are spirits who have passed, but not limited just to spirits who have passed. Because um, when I was doing my shamanism one and, and I was like doing the energy even to the computer, you know, because again, I have people that are on Zoom. And while I was working on that, then somebody else who was in the class was taking pictures and they were taking pictures that orbs flying by. Wow. So it's the different spirits that I am working with as well. Specifically, they're different um, guides and masters and angels that we're working together with. You'll catch pictures of them as well. Sometimes you'll see faces in them. Sometimes they'll recognize the faces of the loved ones. Sometimes they'll recognize the, the masters and energies that are there. Does everybody have two soul guides or are, are you, can you tap into, like you seem to have a lot of people around you that you're tapping into? Um, everybody has a lot of people that they're tapping into. You come into this world with your, with a spirit guide and you come into this world with a guardian angel and you came into this world with a purpose, a soul purpose, right? You're going to do whatever you're going to do, but you need to realize that your guardian angel and your spirit guide are also in their own evolutionary process. They're growing and developing as well. They chose you and you chose them for that same soul goal purpose. So in turn, you're never that far off your path and you're never alone. Now, you will get other guides and other angels that will come in at different times of your life. If you're going into childbearing years, if you get a new job, if you're taking on a new mission, you will bring in, if you're going into a major spiritual awakening, you're going to bring in and attract other guides that you need that will help you during those prominent times in your life to support you through that evolution. And some of them will stay with you for many lifetimes. And some of them are just going to pass in and out for a short time. Do, do we have, do we come in with soul groups? Like, did you and I have a uh, meeting before we were born and say, okay, you're going to do this. I'm going to do this. We'll join up here. Is there this, this idea that all the world's a stage, all the men and women are but actors. They have their entrances and exits and and every, and I think every, I think there are many, many, many different soul groups. I absolutely do think that there's many different soul groups. I will see somebody that's like, oh my God, there you are. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll I'll meet some of my clients. Oh my God, you were a child of mine back in da da da. I'm bawling all over the place, and they're looking at me. Oh, lady, but they're <laughs> sitting there crying too because they're like. I so know you, but I don't know why I know you. <laughs> and, and the thing is, it's there's so many because think about the number of people that you've the, the lives that you've touched just just in the few years that we've had just in one month. Think about the number of people that you have interactions with. You know, and so it's all these different people. And we do have contracts, I think, with some of these that we're going to go ahead and we're going to do this and that. Some of the people that I work with in this lifetime, I remember them in the angelic realm. I remember them in other species. I remember them in my Lemurian world. I remember reading this book once and it was, I was in this crystal cave and I remember being in this crystal cave and I'm like, oh my God, I so know where I am. And it was like, how do I know everything about this in this book? 
but that was my Lemurian lifetime that I didn't know that I had. And then it was like, I knew how Atlantis had ended because I had memories of how Atlantis had ended. So it's just, it's this fabulous tapestry of all kinds of life experiences and taking away the boundaries and allow your imagination to just be in the brilliance of any and all possibilities. But it's about feeling and listening and knowing with that soul truth of your heart, what is the truth for you? Okay, two more questions and then we maybe can talk to some people. Um, well, I, I want to trans a minute if I can do that. Is that a bad yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, that's not? what I'm saying. We want to talk to some, we okay. want to talk to some people. <laughs> All right. We can't, can't leave without that. And you got to do a little bit of, we did in, in our first session, you did some light language. I, I, I'm so fascinated with that. I'd like you to do a little bit more light language. But I want to ask you about healing. And then I want to ask about Lilydale. In terms of healing, what's your understanding of the process? Is the person healing themselves? Or is there energy? How do you interpret when, say, your father suddenly gets healed. What is happening there? So what happens is I am called to sometimes open up. So as people will have their own physical blockages, right? You will hold the traumas, you will hold the illnesses, different um, mental and emotional traumatic events will lock in your body and that will create illness and disharmony in your body. Now, for a person in order to actually be healed, they have to choose to allow that healing to come into play. But oftentimes what I do is that I help move. It's almost like the rotor rooter comes through with that surge of that energy that I am gifting through me. This isn't my energy. This is absolutely energy from the divine coming through me that's pushing into them or opening into them that allows for regeneration to take place and to be able to fracture away what no longer is necessary so it can dissipate and be removed from their body. Oftentimes it's about them choosing to say, I am worthy of receiving this love and forgiving themselves. People live within such that, that, that disharmonic space of, oh my God, I'm so bad over something that really was irrelevant and may not have even been in their life, but it may be something that they learned from their parents as an underlying. So it's about really taking the time to evaluate who you are what do you, what do you believe in? What do you believe in? What is really real for you? And what do you want to believe in? What do you want to bring in your life? Are you ready to dream? Are you ready to expand? Are you ready to grow? And let me tell you, everyone should always be ready to grow. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautifully said. Now, Lilydale, yeah, uh, explain what Lilydale is and what you'll be doing there. So Lilydale is a spiritualist community, the same as Casadega, Casadega and spiritualist community in Florida is the, well, it's the Southern camp of what Lilydale was. Um, and again, been around for 150 years, really, really long time. Lilydale is a very small community that actually opens up Memorial weekend until Labor Day weekend. And um it is in Lilydale, New York. So it's right there next <laughs> to Canada. <laughs> anyway, I will be going there and I will be spending several days offering a number of workshops. Um, I'm also traveling with another friend of mine. Her name is Diane Rivera. She's another medium. And so um, I will be there the, I think it's the 14th through the 17th of July offering workshops. And um, it's a wonderful little haunted community that's you know there, there's all it's been around a long time and it's been full of a lot of <laughs> friends so it's a busy little community is what it is um and yeah yeah so i and i'm also going to be working in syracuse new york as well um i think i'll be over with the new jersey psychics um as i begin traveling back down i think i'll be in north carolina on the way up so i like to do you know an annual loop and um i will be taking another group of people to Peru uh, March 
2nd, 2025, because we're going to go during Carnival. And I take small groups, you know, just 11 people. And next year, I expect to also be hosting a group to Mount Shasta and also out to Sedona. So um, I love to take people to these other places so they get to know all this wonderful different stuff about themselves and how to grow their energy. Wow. Fascinating. So uh, let's do a little bit of uh, channeling. Trends? And, <laughs> yes. And, uh, <laughs> do I have a time limit, or am I good for no, like? No, no, no. You can. No, this is okay. this is this is I'm the not... interesting part. This is what we everybody pays the big money for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So first of all, like I said, um, Bela is my gatekeeper and I have no doubt that he's going to come in first just to say hello. He's kind of like Bob Barker on steroids. He's he's pretty hilarious. Um, we don't pick the personalities. They become what they are. So that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy but he will help announce everybody who's coming in so that that way you will know that okay so one moment please Bela here hello everybody oh, 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 oh. it's a good day I just am so excited to be able to share um this wisdom of being able to meet so many different people in so many different places. So I want to make sure that each of you know that if your spirit guides, maybe your gatekeepers and things like that, you might be feeling that energy just a little bit more tingling and vibrating through you because they're very excited when they get to see that trance channeling because they also have that resonancy within you and that vibration and that frequency just starts to buzz a little bit more and it's always exciting. So wait, anyway, 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 I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to let Jamar come in. So um, one moment, please. Bye-bye. Jamar here. Good day. It is a brilliant day and a time of great transformation that is taking place across the entire earth. You are each recognizing the new vibrations and the frequencies that are moving in succinctly and they are collaborating within the frequency of each of you into a new resonancy, into a new harmonic frequency that is allowing you to have access to greater understanding and a capability of expanding into your spirituality. That resonance of understanding, sight and smell and hearing and feeling and knowing and having a deeper soul relationship with external energies that are beyond the physical of what you see, feel and touch. Each of you are growing into and at an exponential speed that is being increased through all of the timelines that are converging. Yes, you speak of timelines. There truly is not a lot of timelines that we recognize, but it is certainly how things pattern for you. And it has to do with where the alignments are within the planets, where the energy frequencies are the tone and the sound that is resonating from space and how that interacts within the pyramids that are along the planet with, along with how they interact within each of you. The solar flares are a wonderful way of bringing forth vibrational information and downloading that into the frequencies of each of you during Full moons is a wonderful time of when you choose to, what do you want to let go of in life? Writing it down and allowing yourself to eliminate, 
New moons are a wonderful time to manifest and to bring things into fruition. One of the things that's nice about a new moon is that there is a great deal more darkness. And when you work within that darker energy and you're outside during the nighttime hours, you have a greater access to celestial information and downloads and resonances as well. They are not being polluted by the light frequency of the sun. And it's not necessarily a pollution, but it's not having to fight with the balance of that light energy. It has a clearer access to each of you. Your dream time and your nighttime travels are very important for each of you to recognize. Dream time is a time of you to be able to contemplate what might be happening within your life and how to come up with new answers and information. There are many of you who go to sleep who do not remember anything. And during those times, most of your souls are psychically traveling outside of your body and within other dimensions and time of space and sometimes into other lifetimes of your own, where you are bringing back relative information that is essential for you to have access to within this lifetime as well. I am an elder Lemurian, and as a Lemurian, we always hold humanity in the highest regard of being able to assist you in a greater understanding of self, of understanding a various level and a capacity and a capability that each of you have access to. If you choose to open yourself and your awarenesses to, but that is up to each of you. It takes a broad view and it takes a commitment of your heart and of your time within this lifetime. It takes a great faith to continue to step outside into the world of unknowing and to trust that where you are being guided is for that highest essence thereof with you. I also need to remind you there are so many of you who are so worried that you are late and that you are not doing the work that you need to. I can assure you, we will continue to call you into those action-oriented spaces within the time of when you are supposed to be acting. If you choose to totally not enter into that space, the one before you always says, God will tap, tap, tap. God will knock, knock, knock. And then the two by four will come. And it is not that anyone ever wants the two by four. But great traumatic events will unfold to ensure that you get back on your pathway. This can come sometimes as a job loss. This can come sometimes as a, a great illness that you are faced with. Because you have to stop and look and listen to be a part of and to make decisions about yourself with yourself, not just following and reacting, but actually choosing that pathway for you to walk upon. It takes great strength to truly rely on yourself and to know that you have the capacity and that capability. Now, I know that you are interested in listening to light language, so I am going to allow for that transmission to take place. One moment, please. Goncho rantala tsabaranti indigapatantesi, goloto rantamanatalasante, Afashatu shunta namaka, la savarintini banahante serinini kashutunda. That light language was of the Lemurian. Let me explain another. Kansahrunto no balatini kapa o fortunta. 
Ende gohondo lo sorron passa. Nabaka rentissimo shoto. Ambazara yamposho. You recognize the differences and you can feel the vibration of what that is and the information that is being referenced. It is based on what your energetic baseline is as to what works within you and opening you to new levels. I would also like to invite in Mother Mary for just a moment, please, as a blessing of love for each of you. Mother Mary here. Good day to each of you. I come forth bearing that gift of love, surrounding each of you in that heart space and that embrace of brilliance and expansiveness of all that can be. I want to remind each of you to know that you are whole and you are fully loved for exactly who you are. Yes, we see all that you have done in your life, but that has brought you the wisdom to make different choices and decisions. Choose wisely, my beautiful, precious one, and allow your heart to guide you into the whole and the soul of you. Remember, my dear, dear, precious one, how incredibly precious and brilliant you are. Go forth, my dear one, and be that blessed light that we see. Many blessings, my dear, precious, precious one. Many blessings to thee. Bela here. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be able to share with you. And I, I hope to meet you again one day in person too. Bye-bye. Bring myself back. Fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> I love it. Bringing myself back, bringing myself back, bringing myself back. I'm a little wobbly when I first get back. I have to get all back in. And so, so what does it mean coming back? What, what does that feel like in terms of coming um, back into the... I step back in. So I, I leave my spirit body. I feel like my spirit body steps out okay. so that their energies can come in and out. And then I have to acclimate back in. So it's the same as when you're doing a meditation and you elevate out of your body, then you have to settle back into your body. I have to settle back into my body. So I have to connect everything because when I'm out in the spirit realm, I don't use the brain, right? The brain yeah. isn't necessary. I don't take the brain. The brain is here and they are using whatever I have for verbiage and information and stories in my body to be able to share that wisdom with you. It's, uh, it's, I just I, I love I love this kind of stuff. In, in but I have to tell you, this is a funny too. So I was in uh, Peru and I was trans channeling for a woman who spoke Quechua. Well, we were having a really hard time, you know. And I was trying to bring through. I, I think it was Grandfather Ayahuasca. Okay, was was trans channeling a message to her. And so it was so funny. They got mad and they said, "Forget that." And then I dropped into speaking Quechua to her. Wow. <laughs> and I don't know how to speak catch you at all so okay. I don't know how they did that but it was amazing and she understood everything so works for me <laughs> wow. has, has, that, has that happened before in terms of uh talents that you don't have and knowledge well the knowledge that you don't have for sure but talents that you don't have because because the way I looked at the trans channel thing I sort of compared them to people with multiple personality disorders where the eye color changes uh, they could speak different languages. I remember talking to one woman. I said, are you sure you can speak? Uh, you never heard Italian? She said, no, I've never heard Italian. But my one of my alters speaks Italian. 
and and the, these kind of things where one will have one disease uh, and then when the the altar comes in it has a different disease or uh, one wears glasses one doesn't wear glasses have you had a, some of that other than this uh, incident with the language um the the my eye color absolutely changes 100 percent um it turns more gold when i'm trans channeling Wow. And um, so that happens. Um, people will see things around me. Sometimes they will actually see the energies of the different beings that step in. And so that's that's always kind of a fun thing. Or, you know, some of my psychic friends are like, oh, well, I know Michael's coming because I can feel him. He's right there. And then I watch him come and then you let him in. So it's that's kind of just a fun thing as well. But as for, um, well, you know, I don't know. I, I don't pay attention to that part of it because yeah, I'm not. You're, you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you maybe have to do my, I'll maybe send you some DNA tests so you can test because because if eye color changes, that's DNA changing. And if, and that's what I said. If, if you ever get, we've got one already where we've got a positive result. But if you get a second one, uh, everything sort of changes. Then it's sort of like, what, what? The, the DNA is changing? And it's like then it's it's sort of to like do the brain thing once you know because i would love to be able to see the differences of what happens within the brain aspect especially because i can trans channel so many different types of energies i know that when i'm doing the earth energies that it's a whole different vibration and it's a much slower and i know my heartbeat changes sometimes i'll forget to breathe and then you know my gatekeeper is like excuse me she needs to breathe <laughs> So it's, it's just, you know, the physical things have to come into play as well. And I try not to trance longer than like an hour and a half max yeah. um, because it, and it's taken me a long time to be able to build that up because I would have headaches. I would have sore throats. It's a big physical, um, there's an impression that happens within each of these different energies and effects on your body as your body is trying to assimilate me having all the different crystals in me definitely makes a huge difference, but people have to be able to learn how to work with that energy and how to not harm their bodies through the process. Yeah. There's been a lot of work done uh, with the brain on the channel on, on channels like Bashar. And there's a guy uh, in Oregon who does a lot of this with uh, mediums and stuff like that. And they know which parts of the brain light up and there's a lot of gamma. A high gamma, which is you'd find with monks that have been meditating for 20 years and stuff like that. It's very high gamma. Uh, the, the the way I like the DNA is because it's on paper. I mean, then the scientists go like, what? It's not like just, you can, the brain, you can sort of make all sorts of interpretations of what's going on or whatever. But if it's on paper and it's different, it, it's not supposed to be different. So it's, it, you're, there's more and more people studying. I'll send you some of the stuff that I've got on. There's two different people who do uh, the the brain material on uh, the one does um, in actually I think he's in the New York area does uh, all sorts of different people does light he was going to do light language people would do mediums do people praying do uh, all these spiritual sort of experiences and shows the brain patterns for each and so it's sort of like he can at least show that if he, he, the person you say well the person's just making it up well there's a certain brain pattern that comes so if they're making it up it's light, they're all lighting up the same part of the brain and that's sort of, uh, I think where we're getting is you're getting more of an acceptance now in terms of people realizing, yeah, these people are doing something. Something's going on here. Yeah, the science has proven it. The science yeah. is finally catching up. We're able to show the science yeah. of it. That's yeah. the difference. Yeah. And, the, yeah. and with, the, with the, if it's, it's on paper with DNA, then, then there's, there's, there's no argument. They, they can't argue. They got to explain. Because there's not, I remember I talked to one expert on DNA and he said, Grant, I'll explain how DNA works. I said, yeah, I know how DNA is supposed to work. I said, but I think this is going to work. But anyway. We can talk about that later. I'm just uh, so glad that uh, I got to talk to you again and to hear from uh, Jamar. If you ever get him, I'd like to know if he knows Adama and uh, and uh, Antarel, who gave me the message when I went to Shasta. I got a message from Antarel before I went there. Uh, I don't know. I, do, do, you, do you have an interpretation whether they work with other beings? They work with many. I, I will I will tell you right now, both of those, They he works with both of them, because as soon as you said the name, I felt a ping. So wow. when I felt a ping, that's a familiarity. Wow. Well, so you, um, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because that, that there's, there's actually another, I just discovered, I think it was today, another channeler who's channeling Adama, and Adama had the most dramatic UFO sighting or encounters with beings, 
at Mount Shasta in 2020. It's, it, there's nothing even comes close to what happened to these nine people. It's just unbelievable. You know, levitated into the air, hundreds of, of beings around them. And and they were, uh, you know, in this sort of a portal type thing and uh, petrified out of their minds. But the, the more they said more beings than trees in the forest. And it was like, wow. wow. So then that that was uh, that was a dama. But uh, Antarel was one I had. But uh, I, I want to thank you for this. And I, I will let my sister know, as I said, and uh, hopefully we can uh, g meet up with you somewhere. Um, and I will definitely recommend you to one uh, group that that would love to have you because uh, they're all sort of, you know, tarot card readers and mediums and they all gathered and they do business as well. So they're all business people. And you mentioned this, that you are actually able to train people to run businesses on this kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's what these people yeah, do. Yeah, that's, that's the other thing. You know, people get all caught up in the energy of it. But if you don't do the business of it, you're not going to be able to make it work. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how wonderful your heart is. You still need to be able to make money at it so that you can do it. And you need to be able to preserve yourself and how you are managing and maintaining that too. So um, well, if, if they do, you'll be going to yeah. Illinois. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, I do want to invite people to come and visit me at my website, heartforsouls.com or judyweaver.com. I've written, like I said, a couple of books, Truth Beyond. This is my my this is my tree that chatted with me out in Mount Shasta. The, that, uh, that's the Shasta. You have a lot of stuff on Shasta in there, right? Yeah, this is almost all, this is all trans-channeled information, and Jamar is the one who really helped me write it. I got together with a bunch of ladies, and we sat down and we asked questions. I just dropped into trance and said, okay, how can I grow my spirituality? And, you know, then I would trance channel these different beings. You like Archangel Raphael came through and talked about what I could be doing with the body. Somebody else came through and talked about spirituality. One was, um, how can I get to know my spirit guide? And so then the first thing that came through was a spirit guide trainer. Well, it would make sense that there's a spirit guide trainer, but who knew that there was a spirit guide trainer? <laughs> oh. that, that would that'd be my number one question is how do I make contact with my spirit guide? Yeah, you know, and, and it was so funny. It talks about the galactic council of uh, where they put all the DNA and how then they star seed that information and make decisions as they are blending and creating the humanness. And it's, it's some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and all your stuff is uh, at Amazon or do you sell it on your website as well so that you can um it's it's in Amazon it's in Barnes and Noble um I do have books available myself and one of the things that I like to do is a book club so if anybody decides that they want to do a book club they can go ahead and reach out to me I will sign the books to whoever you're going to have in your group and then um, mail them to you and then I will actually sign on two different times so it gives you a chance to meet me and to get a quick experience personally of the trance channeling and then at the end I give everybody like a little mini reading of whoever was in the club so it's just a fun thing that I like to do because I think it's nice to personalize the author you know yes. I mean I know yes. I'm busy but it's okay and do you do I, event, I you do, a, do you do events or, uh, in your home area like Florida and the other question is you mentioned spiritualist church do you ever uh, interact with any of the mediums that come there like physical mediums that that seem to come to Florida, they bring them in there, uh, Kai Muga and people like that? I interact with all kinds of people on a regular basis. <laughs> I am hosting events um, really all around the state of Florida um, and, and in Ormond Beach area. And I do electronic and, and Zoom as well. Um, I will, I try to, you know, be a person that goes to different places and doing things as well as helping to host people who come to the area um too so yeah that's what i do i'm just out there you know spread, doing, doing spreading the thing. love <laughs> and the thing is i do independent sessions as well i need to yeah. make sure to let people know that and or if you want to do a group yeah. session i'm perfectly fine with signing on electronically as well and yeah. that's just kind of a fun thing invite me into your gathering <laughs> Into the Zoom. So is there any events in Florida that you'll be doing in the next, they were in March of 2024. Is there anything coming up where? 
got quite a few different things coming up. So actually uh, tomorrow I'm doing my spirituality as your business. So that's a workshop that's going to be online next weekend. I'll be in Palm coast at a wellness expo. Um, and then the first weekend in April, I'll be over in Sarasota uh, spirit fest. Um, the 23rd of April, I'm starting my seven week series, which is channeling your spiritual gifts. And that's really important for people to be able to tap in to get that information for themselves. Um, the third weekend in April, I'm going to be going up to Memphis, Tennessee um, to do Spirit Fest up there. So yeah, I'm when I say I'm all over the place, I'm all over the place. I do a, I do a monthly healing. I do a monthly uh, message circle. So the second Thursday, the fourth um, Thursday, I'm going to be doing a workshop in Casadega coming up on um, April the 13th, which is healing your heart with the angels. I've got a workshop with Lily Dale off season on Good Friday, which is the 30th of March. And that is blessings from Mother Mary. So I'll be trans channeling Mother Mary for that one. I just did Camp Chesterfield this last Monday. So, oh, my goodness. You're yeah, like the ever ready I, bunny. I, I, I'm not going to say I'm not busy. I'm very busy. <laughs> and, and, and they can get that by going to your website. They can find yeah. all those events. Yeah, every, everything's on my website and you can hit up the happenings. You know, my uh, newsletter is there that lets you know and also Facebook page. Um, so, yeah. And, and your newsletter is one, once a month? Once a month. Yes. And please go ahead and send me that. And then you'll get to know where I'm going to be in your area. Um, and if you've got something that's coming up, I would be happy to, you know, give me a call, book me, bring me out, uh, you know, let's, let's make it happen. I'm, I'm wow. all about going places and seeing things. <laughs> you, you, got a, you got 60 years left to work. <laughs> yeah, I got a long time. <laughs> well, Judy, it was a, a pleasure as, as usual, and maybe we can do it again. Uh, I'd love to. You. I'd love because, you. Yeah. Uh, pe people, I think will enjoy this, uh, this and and I think you'll get a lot of people reacting because that's a lot of my audience is uh, very acquainted with what you're talking about here. So thank fabulous, you very much, fabulous. and uh, say thank you to all the the the, the being uh, people that came in. Do you call them beings or just entities or uh, you? They don't care what they. They don't call. care. Yeah. <laughs> I remember we, Paul Stel. I remember Paul. We Stel always get all that. crazy. What's their name? And they're like, I don't care. I don't have a name. You think I, you have a name? What do you want? What do you want me to call you? You know, yeah. um, I, I am very appreciative to all of the different energies that come in and that work with me and that are really trying to help each of us. And that's what it comes down to. Just open your heart a little bit more and just listen a little more, feel a little more and allow yourself to just be in that possibility a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. The way I describe it is, Shut down the, the male ego brain and let the female brain open up a little bit and it'll tap into more oneness and family and things like that rather than me versus you separation. And uh, so you brought that energy through magnificently. And I thank you. Well, thank you so much. It's just been a lovely experience. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.